Good morning and happy Easter to you. Welcome to the program. My name is Jesse Lee Peterson. I want to invite you to call in or, or email us if you have questions concerning or comments concerning today's meeting. Um, you can call 1-800-411-BOND, 1-800-411-2663, and you can email church at bondinfo.org, church at bondinfo.org, and put your name in town, your name in town on your emails, and we will try and get to them today. We will get to them today. Uh, I appreciate you doing that. Good morning to everybody here. Happy Easter. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Normally in black churches, black women wear big hats on today's day, Easter day. Where are your hats? No hats today. Well, happy Easter anyway. All right. Um, I, I do appreciate you being here. Did everybody fill out those cards about your, your needs? Yeah. Three of them. Did you list down three? Yeah, I listed down three. Did you want to do four or was three enough? Um, three is good enough for me. That's, I think that's enough I can get out for today. Oh, okay. It would be good for me. All right. My life, so. Uh, so you have three needs that you would like to get taken care of. How old are you? Me, 22. You're 22? Uh -huh. You look younger. I, know every, I get that everywhere, so. You look, you look like my young brother that we call Babra. <clears throat> you look just like him. But um, I appreciate you guys doing that. Next week I'll tell you why I needed that, all right? We've got to get your needs met. Today is about Christ. It's about Easter. And uh, we got to focus somewhat on that today. But if there's something else you'd like to deal with, I definitely want to hear from you. But I think it's important to talk about uh, Christ and his message and his purpose. Because what I've discovered is that a lot of people talk about him, talk about God, they talk about Christ. But they don't have a clue of what he's really all about. They're not living it. Um, one of the uh, men that we worked with was telling me last night that he, on his job, there are two black females, uh, or were two black females. One was his boss, and the other was a co-worker. And that every day they were talking about God, you know, praise the Lord and quote scriptures. And there was a young man who worked with them that says that he doesn't believe in God. He doesn't believe God exists because he doesn't see examples of God existence around him. And the lady was like, oh, don't say that about the Lord. You know, there is a guy, and they quote chapters and scriptures to this guy, right? And the other day, uh, the lady, both ladies were fired. They got fired on the job because they had a scheme going on where they would come in early and they would go shopping in the store. And then one would go to the cash register and pretend like she's checking the other one out, you know, her groceries or whatever it is out. And they were, they were not really checking this stuff out, but putting it in another basket, in the other one's basket, as though they pretended that they were, you know, checking out groceries. And so these two Christians were stealing on, on the job, all in the name of Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> and that's, that's just so typical of Christians today. You know, they, they go to church, they praise the Lord, they confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, and yet they're mean to one another, they're dishonest, you know, they're evil, they, they don't have real love, and, 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 and just such a bad example to set about Christ, and that has nothing to do with him. And so hopefully today after this meeting, you would decide not to pretend you know him or get to know him because you're really hurting other people by setting that bad example. You're turning people away from him. And true men and women of God are supposed to bring people onto him, bring them onto him. And what Christ did was he was a, a living example of what we should become. Everything he had to go through, he did it so that we can see that we can overcome it, that we don't have to live the way that we live. And we don't have to pretend like we know him, but we can truly know him. Um, and Christ suffered things that we would never have to suffer. And the beauty about it, he's not going to give us any more than we can handle. Um, he's not asking us to share blood. He's just asking us to love one another. And he's asking us not to run away from our challenges and to deal with them. And yet, I can hardly find 10 people who are happy to have issues in their life that they can overcome. Most people get mad about them and all in the name of Jesus. It's so weird to me 
it just blows my mind that people can get up every, every Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and go to church, and nothing changed, and they don't notice that nothing has changed. I, I, I don't know what that mindset is now. Maybe they don't think you can change. I don't know what it is. But it's like Christ wasted his life for most people. That's why he said only a few is going to uh, find that straight and narrow path. They're going to find a way. Most people, and I'm telling you this so you don't expect most people to know it. Most people would never know God. They would never be that example. They would never be born again. Most will not. Only a few. And so I, I want to encourage you not to judge Christ based on the Christians. Because most Christians are not good examples of what he was about. And I don't want to just tell you today what it's about. Because I know we have a lot of Christians here today, right? Do we have any Christians? Everybody afraid to raise their hand now? <laughs> so everybody here are sinners. No, no, no born again Christians. Well, this is good then. We're going to get everybody saved. Nobody. Only Hermes. You raise your hand, Hermes? You're not sure. You think of yourself as one. <laughs> Most Christians think of themselves as one. Is that the same thing? Being born again and a Christian? Is it the same thing? I'm sorry? Can you be a Christian before you're born again? Can you be a Christian before you're born again? That's a good question. Uh, Kerr want to answer that real fast. I do, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the answer to that one. What are you saying to that, Sheen? What was it? Can you, Can you be a Christian before you're born again? Um, I think that you can believe in Christ and believe in, in his life and, and what he taught, um, but still maybe not know that completely. You can believe in it, but not, be, but not know that, not be a Christian, not be born again? Not set the example. I think you can strive to, to be that. Okay. But is a Christian just believing in God? Is that uh, a Christian? Is that a Christian? Do you believe in God? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Yes. A little louder for me? Yell at me the way you yell at your boyfriend. That's I don't want to yell. <laughs> I'm sorry? Yes. You can be, what was your question again? <laughs> is, a, I forgot. is a Christian just believing in God? Oh, is a Christian just believing in God? Mm. No. Mm. What is it? Why do you think that? I don't know. I don't really want to talk. I just want to listen. Oh, she's shy. I'll ask her that. Um, uh -oh. I really don't think. Well, it's more than just believing in God. It depends on if you believe in good things besides, you know, the Lord. He's good. Everybody knows that. But if you believe in positive things, then I could think you put those together and I'll be better. Are you a Christian? Me? I consider myself a Christian. You consider yourself one, but you're not. One. No, I mean, I'm here today, so whatever everybody else is doing here today, then we are together, and that's what I believe in. So you're doing, well, they're all not Christians. They're just. Oh, they're, okay. they're, <laughs> I'm just trying to make a point. So you want to get on that boat with them? No, I'll, I'll take my own path, but we all here together today, so that's good enough for me. That's good enough? So wherever, whatever happened to them, you go along with it? No. Uh, what do you mean that's good enough for you then? Well, we let, all here. And let me ask happened. this question about Christ, all right? And because I don't want to give you just, there's so much I want to say about him, but I kind of want to get some feedback to see where you are with him and your relationship with him. How many of you have heard of Christ, Jesus Christ? You've heard about him, right? At least you've heard about him. You've heard about him. Oh, good. Um, you've heard about him. You've heard about him? Yes. Marcus? Yes. And, and what do you know about him? Um, that he um, was a carpenter. <laughs> and, uh, That's deep. <laughs> no, you know, he said that he was the um, son of God and uh, he came here to um, pay for the sins of mankind so that we would uh, be able to have uh, that direct access to God before. Um, they was like having priests and stuff, and you know, we didn't have to have any other followers and stuff before. Oh, and yeah. how has he impacted your life by hearing about him? Or has he impacted your life in any way? I think that um, 
as the best example is coming to you know when I first found out about the organization with Bond um, a long time ago, and it kind of made, I guess, God kind of real to me before uh, because of the examples I have from like um, my dad or from other people around. It didn't make me want to have too much to do with it because it didn't seem to have any benefit. Okay. And so how has it impacted your life knowing that? Knowing that? Has anything good happened in your life to you personally? Well, it's that now that we, um, we do have a choice about what it is that we want to do. You have a choice? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. A choice to do what? To Whatever decide, it is you want to do? No, to decide. We have a choice to live a different way. Before, I guess, when, um, when we think we're in control, we're basically out of control and then it just doesn't work and then you don't know what else to do, but um, you try to figure out things and trying a bunch of stuff, when knowing now that there is a choice, you decide if and you And have you taken that time. choice? Uh, I'm still um, trying to figure some things out. You're trying so, to figure some no. things out? <laughs> and your answer is no, you have not taken that choice? No. I can't hear you. No. No, and why not? <laughs> um, there's some things that I'm still not ready to let go of yet. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, okay. That's a good answer. You still like hell better than heaven. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I know I gotta let some of that stuff go, but I'm not quite less to release you're still all love, yet, all hell. You're still in love with hell. A little bit. Oh, okay. Um, you've heard about Christ? Right. Yes. And what did you hear about him? Well, <laughs> I've heard that if you believe in him, that you will have everlasting life. Everlasting life. <laughs> and do you believe that? Um, well, I kind of just kind of try to um, connect directly to God. I don't, I don't know about Christ. Oh, you don't know about him. I so you're really trying know. to try to go around him to get to God. <laughs> well, that's pretty normal for women, honey. They want to go around the man <laughs> to get to God. I, I don't know him. I really don't know him. I wasn't raised to know him, so I just, it's kind of open. To How long have you been an adult? <laughs> a long time. And so at what point as an adult are you going to try to figure this out for yourself? Well, I, I have asked the question. I do yeah. ask the question, but I don't have a real clear answer. About who he is? About who he is. Oh, okay. You know, but I, I, I just, um, I, I always wow, have it open and I, and I go to God. <laughs> so you always, what was the last thing you said? You're open? I have it. I I have it. I have no big decision on it. I just it's just open. And so when you go to God, you like you know what? I know your son is here in the way, but I want to talk right to you. That's how you do it. Well, I don't say that. I just you know, I just. What good has it done you to go directly to God rather it, it, without knowing about Christ? It's done all the world. It well, done a lot of good. Yes. Oh, okay. It's changed me a lot. Okay. So you don't need Christ. You didn't have to go through him. Well, I don't. I don't. Wouldn't say that. I don't. I. I don't know if I. I. I, I don't know. <laughs> you can relax, guy. We'll have Easter <laughs> fellowship. <laughs> it's not school. You're not gonna make an A or a B. <laughs> Andy, give me a pen because I want to jot some note answers. You well, can totally relax. You can't say anything wrong here. I just want to make sure you know because there are a lot of people looking at Christians. I, I don't need to pat you. Thank you. And uh, uh, they are looking for help. They are looking for him. Well, I don't know if you have to know Christ so directly in order to, to live a, a good life. Or maybe you can live a life that's good and you'll be knowing God and knowing Christ anyway and not know that you know him. Right. Do you read the scriptures? Yeah. Not too much. Have you ever read anything about his life at all? Yes, I have and, and it was unbelievable. It yeah. was just I it was just 
an amazing guy. Amazing. Huh? Amazing. Yeah. amazing. Amazing guy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Christine, do you know Christ? You know about him? I know about him. What, what do you know about him? Um, well, I know that he was sent here to um, be an example. Um, what type yeah. of example? Well, the example of a, of a perfect life of what you could live if you were uh, good and pure. And um, the examples that are in the, 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 the New Testament, um, there's probably something for almost every situation you could possibly get in. Give me an example of what type of example he is. Um, well, I mean, he, he was the only person that was ever good through and through and, and um, had love in his heart. And um, he, he just lived the perfect life. I'm sorry? He lived the perfect life. You know, the perfect life. And, and what good has it done you to know that? Well, I think I've, I've learned a lot from, from the scriptures. I haven't actually read a lot of them recently, but when I was um, younger, um, in my late teens and 20s, I became very um, in, involved and um, just was in, in you know, uh, awe of, of the things that, that you could read about there. About, You're not really saying anything. Well, I mean, like for instance, every every example that you have about things that you know, money or worrying about you know different things. I mean, if you really read the, the scriptures, you know that there, there's no reason to worry um, and and not to. Um, you know, care about the future just to, you know, live your life now. And I think that's a good way to live. You think that's it? So have you been able to live that way in knowing him? Well, I mean, Again, this is not back. a test. Okay, I'm able to pull myself back. I can see where I'm getting stressed out about um, things that, that may happen. And then I say, well, you know, just don't get ahead of yourself. Just you know, stay in the moment and, and uh, live the best way you can now. And I, I think that was, that's helped me. Oh, okay. How about you, Doug? You, you heard about this guy? Uh, yeah. What would you hear about him? Um, I mean, uh, to be honest with you, I haven't really read the scriptures or anything. Just, you just kind of heard him about it yeah, along the way? Yeah. And what's your impression of what you heard? <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I mean, I guess the main thing is, is uh, <clears throat> you know, God, God sent him to, to die for our sins so we could, um, you know, we could overcome and, and uh, live, live another way. So that you can overcome and live another way? Have you been able to do that just by hearing about him? Uh, no. No? Okay. Um, how about you, Eli? Have you ever heard about Jesus Christ? Yes. And what did you hear about him? Um, I heard that he was sent down to earth to show us um, how we need to change and what we need to do different in order to live life right and have a good relationship with God. Change in what way? Uh, in a way so that we could uh, do things the way that God wanted us to do things and, and understand about that. You're 13 right now, right? Yes. So has that helped to know about him at all? Um, Yes. In what way? I think that, you know, you have choices to make in life and knowing that uh, whether God wants to do things and whether he wants you to do things and making choices based on that, you know, and that you're doing that. And so he helped you to see the right choices to make? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he's not around to help. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that 13, I understand that. Um, Karen, you know, you said, did you raise your hand? You know Christ? Um, you don't know him? Uh, no, I, I'd say no. I don't. All the Jesus and God stuff, I just kind of try to live, live by what it says in the Proverbs and just try to do that. You just read the Proverbs only? Yeah, that's the only interest I have in them. And why is that? Why so uh, limited? Because the, all the stories and stuff just don't matter to me. So his life doesn't matter? 
No. And what good would it do you to read the Proverbs without understanding his life? Um, because with the, the way it says to live just makes sense. But how can you live that way without knowing him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why you have to. I don't, maybe I'm missing something, but I mean, it makes sense to me. Well, how did you come up with, I just need the Proverbs? Did you make that up yourself? No, just because reading different things in the Bible, the Proverbs are the only thing that I can relate to or have any meaning to me. Have you read, so, have, I'm sorry, have you read about his life? Some of it. Oh, the phone number, folks, is 800-411-BOND, 800-411-2663. Or you can email churchatbondinfo.org, churchatbondinfo.org. I'm sorry. Ha, have you read about his life at all? We're on commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> Be back from the break. Okay. Uh, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Um, Honestly, most of what I know about his life is what we watch on TV. You know, like the movies of all that stuff. Uh, you watch the movies. Yeah. And you're like, okay, family, this is Jesus right here. <laughs> you better learn from him. <laughs> I'm not going to be, I'm just going to give you Proverbs. <laughs> uh, what impact do you think is having on your family not to know about Christ? Just know um, Proverbs or watch TV? No, we don't watch TV. That's from when I was a kid. Oh. Um, I don't know what impact it's having. Because you're, like, you're the I'm Christ... Not, uh, uh, you're the Christ person in your home, right? Yeah. But if you don't know about the guy, how are you going to be him? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't give them uh, or try to teach them about God from what I learned through the Bible. How do you try to teach them? Um, through my, you know, when I meditate, I just try to share with them how to deal with things, but not necessarily... Uh, God wants you to do this or God wants you to do that. It's just kind of how to deal with given situations. So if they, they're out there in the street and they hear about Jesus one day and they come home and say, Dad, the teacher or the stranger on the street told me about Jesus. Who was he? Would you like pull out a movie? No. <laughs> would you go to Proverbs? No. Oh, what would you do? Uh, I tell them that Jesus is the Son of God and that God sent him down to pay for our sins and give us a way back to, uh, a way to heaven. And you think that'll be enough? Yeah. You do? You think that'll be enough, Sheila, for him to just say that? Do you know, and, and I'll ask anybody, do you know one person on earth that know about that and that seemed to be enough? Anybody know anybody like that? They, know, they heard know that Jesus know, was... Know all about the Bible and stuff, but doesn't make any difference. I know, but just telling somebody Jesus was the Son of God and he came down from heaven so that we can... What you, you say? You said the kid asked who he was. Yeah, that but that won't be enough, though. It won't, it's just a story. Enough for what? Anything. Enough. About him. The, the best way for them to learn is to see it. To see what? To see, to see what you're supposed to be like. And how do you see it? Um, because we're supposed to be a reflection of that. All right. But you still should know something about this guy that you're trying to imitate, right? Mm -hmm. You think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you, um, Wayne Jr.? You know, you heard of Jesus? Yes. And what did you hear about him? You said what? <coughs> what did you hear about him? Um, he's a. Uh, I heard of, I've heard his life story, and you know, that you're supposed to follow his ways and. He died for our sins, so he, you know, absolved us our, of our sins, and he did what? Absolved, absolved us of, of our sins, and we're supposed to live um, by the example that he set, right. to know God, and you know, have peace, and be on that straight path. And has that worked for you? Um, I can't say that I know God, but in a lot of situations and instances, it, it's helped me. It, it, I know what's, you know. Um, I don't want to be a bad person or, you know. Are you a bad person? No. You're a good person? Yes. You're a good person? Yes. What's good about you? 
I know, but you're a caring guy, you know, I, I help people out. Caring guy, sound like the welfare. <laughs> I mean, I'll get my, I don't know. Um, but I'm just saying as far as, you know, there's certain things that are a lot of evil out there and a lot of decisions you can make or, you know, not make to, that could impact your life in very bad ways. And This is amazing to me. This is so, isn't this interesting? Yeah. I mean, I'm learning a lot right now. Um, what did you hear about him? How did you hear about him? From whom? From here, from my mom, from, I mean, at school, everywhere. You hear about him all over. Have you ever read about him for yourself? Yeah. You have? And did that impact your life by reading about him, seeking out for him for yourself? I mean, it's all, it's all impacted me. Oh, it has. Um, in the white shirt, when you hear what you've just heard about Jesus, what does that do for you? What you've heard just now in this room this morning, what does it do for you to hear what you just heard? Uh, it, it sort of reaffirms that um, people don't really, they don't personally know who, they don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. And do you have one? I don't. Um, what has been said to make you think that they don't have a personal relationship with him? Well, because most people are, are, are admitting that. Right now? You just heard people admit that today, this morning? Well, I hear a lot of, about, I know about Jesus, I know the story, and there's not a confident, I know Jesus, I know who he is, oh, okay. on and on. And you say you don't have a personal relationship with him either? Well, I've read a lot about him. I've um, listened uh, uh, to a lot of stories about him. I've, uh, I'm very interested in it. I've, <laughs> I have a deep understanding of the story. Yes. And, um, uh, but when I pray or meditate, I, I sit there and I, uh, I want to know. I've never, I've never said, there you are. You know, I've never had that. Um, well, that's Jesus. This is you, and I've I wanted to, and I the same thing goes with for God. When I I feel like uh, this lady said, I feel like I'm um, sort of praying more to God than Jesus because Jesus even seems more abstract, even though I understand the story and I understand it deeply, and it makes me happy, and I'm drawn to it. All right. But you can't really make that connection. I've never, I've never felt like, uh, like, identify though that's Jesus sending any kind of message to me directly. It's interesting uh, this thing about Jesus because I hear a lot of discussion about him now. We uh, every Friday we have the Bible go to guy on the show on my radio show, and he discussed the issue of Jesus Christ, you know, Christianity and all that. And I hear now people calling him God. They were saying that he was, um, he was Jesus and he was God. They were saying that he is, you know, just kind of everything but what he really is. And I'm wondering why are people becoming so confused about something that used to be so simple? How come this idea of who he is is changing to a way that it is confusing and confining people? They, they don't really now know who he is. And I remember that Satan made a promise to God that he's going to deceive every man, woman, and child. And I think that the fact that he's able to deceive you about the relationship with Jesus and who he really was is probably one of the most um, cunning, but yet, in the realm of hell, the most successful thing he's ever done. If he can confuse you about Jesus, then he got you. And he's doing it. I'm listening to preachers all the time. Just They are made, into, made him into something that he's not. He was never intended to be made into that. He even said it over and over again in the Bible. This is who I am. This is what I represent. Don't look at me this way. Don't carry on about me because I'm on a mission here. I'm not the one you should be worshiping. You know, don't turn me into a God. Just see me as I am. And folks are not seeing him as he is because they're listening to these teachers who are confusing them about him. And it's so sad because it's preventing people from overcoming evil, really, to do that. Yes, sir. 
what, if, if I listen to a preacher I, on the radio or TV, or if I read about it or, or look into it, I don't really, it doesn't bother me that I don't know, yeah. or I don't really have an idea. I just kind of, because I know there's like a goodness and a truth and a light, not that I'm always, you know, I, I miss it a lot, uh, but it, I feel like it's had an effect on my life in a yeah. big way. Why do you keep confirming with yourself that you miss it a lot? It's, that's an interesting point. Yeah, I do that a lot, and, and sometimes I think that that's, that's me lying when I do know. Yeah, I don't know where that comes from. I hear that from a lot of people. Well, if they want to correct somebody else, they'll correct them and say, oh, I do it too. What the purpose of correcting somebody if you got the same problem? You know, and how, <laughs> how are you going to help them by confessing you have the same problem? And how, do, how will they know they can get better if you have the same problem? Isn't that dumb? Do you ever hear people do that? I, I did that the other day. Yeah. I, do it I, I hear I, that I a lot. I'm life. thinking, why in the world are you trying to correct somebody if you have the same problem? Because you're not giving them hope. You're going to say, oh, don't act up. But I understand it because I act up too. <laughs> okay, so am I going to be able to get better? And so why do you do that? Well, if I'm not, I, I might not outrightly be correcting someone. They might uh, seek to have a conversation with me, and we're talking about serious things. And, uh, like, I know certain things, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk. We're talking, and I'll, I'll feel myself saying, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not perfect, and I'm not trying, you know, to be. I just, I feel like I, I sometimes uh, want to dumb myself down to not look better than them. Yeah. And um, that's I, what it is. I question that, and I say, um, I, and I can, I understand how, why I do that, but it's so ingrained in me that uh, sometimes I, I, I didn't even need to say that because. In a, it's a cowardly way. It. It's cowardly. It's a cowardly way of trying to correct someone. How, how? Because you don't know how to handle their response to your correction. And so if you weaken yourself, it's going to prevent them, or you think that it's going to prevent them from going off on you for correcting them. Okay, on that note, let me ask you. They're going to say, you're not perfect either. But if you confess you're not perfect, you don't have to deal with that. So can you have uh, the truth and... and uh, be saved. Can you be saved and at the same time say something like that? Something as ridiculous as that and still be saved or are you, or you no. not? Because you wouldn't say no. that. No. If you're born again, you wouldn't say that. You wouldn't say that. If you're truly, truly, truly born again, there's no need to say that. Because being born again gives you insight into, deal with, into dealing with everything. So you wouldn't have to say that. It wouldn't even be there to say. So should you just keep your Plus, you wouldn't be a coward. <laughs> Wait, say that last <laughs> Plus, you wouldn't be cowardly in correcting somebody or telling them the truth. You wouldn't have fear about it. You wouldn't have to lower yourself in order to do it if you were born again. Right. You're confused. Well... No, it, that helped a lot. I, uh, I just have to sit with that. Um, if you were born again, God would allow you to see that to do something like that implies that you're not born again and that you're operating from fear. Right. And that you're, you're, you're coming from the wrong. I definitely have, uh, still have a lot of fear in me. Yeah. And, uh, but I, other times you've told me, uh, I've asked you um, about... Um, just speaking freely and, 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 and talking about things. Right. That, and, I, and, 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 you know, I've, I've given you stories of what's going on and how I talk. Right. And you, and you said, don't hold, don't, don't hold yourself back or censor yourself. But that don't mean you go insane. If you're corrected somewhere, you don't need to point out there what's wrong with you. We say that again. That doesn't mean that when you're correcting the sinner, you don't have to point out that you're a sinner too. So even though I'm not saved and I'm in a conversation where I am correcting, uh, I, I should still speak my mind. You should speak the truth. And I don't need, speak the truth, yeah. but, I, but I don't need to do this cowardly thing of That's right. saying, well, I do it too. That's right. So, because it's not going to help when you soften it. So you can speak the truth even when you're not saved. Yes, if you see it. 
That makes sense? Yeah, it does make sense. Because some people are on the way, and they see little glimpses of truth along the way. You know, they're on their way to salvation. Right. And they see that this is wrong. They know right from wrong along the way. So you have a responsibility to speak the truth about that. Okay, and on, but on that note... Nowhere, nowhere in Scripture where you're going to see Jesus correcting somebody... He'll say, oh, but I was like, I'm like that, too. <laughs> right. You know, God said, don't sin, but you know what? I'm a sinner, too, but I understand it, but don't sin. Nowhere you're going to find that. Right. He called them liars and hypocrites and vagabonds. You know the Bible, but it's far away from you. You of your father, the devil. You know, he just point out, he just, oh, you know what? You of your father, the devil. I am, too. <laughs> but I just want to tell you, you of your father, the devil. It's insane. Right. <clears throat> you've you've said before that you don't there this whole process thing is is not it doesn't need to be true and yeah. you could switch like that yes uh, if you have this idea in your mind that it's a process right then you're set up for a process right because and god can change your heart just like that right the moment you can see that you're wrong you can change but if you got a process then the process is going to kick in and say, well, you know what? Yeah, you're wrong. Right. But it's a process. You hide in the process. <laughs> you know, you're wrong, but not now. <laughs> it's a process. Because that's how the devil set you up in your mind. And you're going to listen to him because now you believe the lie. For me, it, it, it definitely feels... Where God said, I'll change you in a minute at, at the twinkling of an eye. Right. I believe that. But the devil says it's a process. And now people go around preaching the process. I understand that. I feel like for me it's been a process and this thing about me... Only because you set up that lie to believe in your head as a process. True. It's an instant change. My heart changed just like that. The moment I saw I was wrong, my whole life changed. My heart changed. He took it away from me. He gave me a new heart. Right. It wasn't a process. It was just me sitting and agreeing, admitting that I'm wrong, seeing it in my heart. And it changed at the twinkling of an eye. And I've not been the same. But if I had heard somebody say, oh, it's a process, then I'd be like, okay, Lord, let me go through this process thing. Let me take another hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> but some people, but God works through some people in ways where it's like an onion, where it's being peeled, layers are being peeled off, right? For those with big egos that love lies and are not ready to change now. It's like what he said, he's not ready for it yet. So he has a glimpse of it once in a while, but he's suffering unnecessarily because the onion is peeling, but how does, he doesn't know if he's gonna be alive the next minute for the, for the entire onion to peel. But because he has a major ego, it's taking a while. <laughs> and in the meantime, his kids gonna suffer, life gonna suffer unnecessarily because Christ already came and set us free. But he's going through the peeling of the onion. That's another lie that's been taught to you. It's a worldly lie. It's from people that don't know God. You, have you ever heard Christ say, oh, I'm peeling an onion. <laughs> <laughs> By the time this onion's done, I'll be free. <laughs> have you ever heard him say that? No. So who came up with this process, peeling of onions? Well, again, I'm not, I don't want to belabor the point of, right. of, of it's a process. How, however, uh, what I know and how I've you know, experience, um, you know, my <laughs> process. Is, uh, <laughs> I is, wish uh, you didn't have that mindset. You've been taught wrong, wrongly, and now you're trying, my phone is ringing. You hear my, my thing going off? He's trying to turn them off, right? I know, I forgot. <laughs> and uh, I hope it's not being picked up on the mic then. Yeah, they do. Uh, but you've been taught, the moment we come into the earth, we, they start teaching us. Our parents start teaching us. Then they turn us over to the school. They, talk, they start to teach us. Then they give us to these phony preachers and they start to teach us. And we're messed up. Now we got to try to overcome this teaching. But if they leave us alone as children and be a living example, we'll discover it as we are maturing in life. Then we don't have to work for the rest of our life trying to overcome the process. That's what you're trying to overcome, being taught the wrong thing being taught to live by your thoughts instead of by your spirit. That's what the problem is. And that's what you're wrestling with. 
your, your mind is overshadowing. The lie is taken away from the truth for you. Because it will not let you rest. It's constantly telling you you got to do something else. You got to do this. You got to do that. When God said of yourself, you could do nothing. There's nothing you have to do. But admit that you're wrong. And you shall be born again. Isn't that simple? That's all you have to do. Confess your sins and you shall be born again. So you admit you're wrong. The process is done. It's just that simple. But we've been taught, oh, no, it's not. It takes time. You got to unwind. You know, it's a process. You got to peel the onion. It's a lie. It's a setup. It's a lie. It's a total lie. And any preacher or anybody that tell you that, you need to leave there and go to barn. <laughs> yes, sir. Ken, did you have your hand? Yeah, I did. And it was real quick <clears throat> to his comment, which is that you know, truth doesn't have to qualify itself. There's no fear when you speak the truth. So you, you know when you said something true that you say it and there's force behind it. So you, you don't have to qualify anything that you say if, if you're speaking the truth. But you know you're not speaking the truth if you feel that you have fear or that you feel you have to qualify it. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, so when you became saved, you know, born again, saved, would you consider that, that um, you still sin? No, you can't sin if you're born again. And if someone sins and say that they're born again, then they're lying and the truth is not in them. You can't because sin is of the devil. And if you sin, you're of your father, the devil. So you cannot do it once you're born again. Do you know what sin is? Wrong. I'm sorry? Anything wrong. Anything that's wrong? Give me an example of what you mean. I don't have an example you asked me. You don't have an example of no, I mean, what sin is? is um, lying, stealing, being dishonest. Lying, stealing, and being dishonest? Mm -hmm. That's sin? Mm -hmm. How many people agree with that? That's yeah, part of I mean, sin. That's not all of sin. That's not What's everything. all of sin? Because there is an all of sin. All of sin, evil. <clears throat> I'm sorry? Evil. You do? I mean, evil? I heard somebody say, I do, and I picked up, you do. Evil is sin? Mm -hmm. And what is evil? Uh, the devil. The devil? Okay. And how many people agree with that? What, it's not a test. We're fellowshipping, guys. What's Relax. That? You can be wrong. Just relax. It's not a test. This is a fellowship. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not sorry. I know you want me to just throw out a bunch of scriptures and preach at you. And then we, and then then we go to the pit. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. But all, the only thing that will happen from that, I would get better and you won't. Really. And then you, you need to preach it all the time. So and then if it doesn't work at this church, you'll find somebody else's church to go to to make you feel good. You need to know because you got to live with you. I don't live with you. Christ said, seek God, and he, uh, he want you to know for yourself. Because I could be lying. And if you don't know for yourself, you don't know if I'm lying or not. You know what I mean? I could easily just be making up lies. <laughs> and people love lies, and you guys give me a lot of money. Because if I lie to you, you'll pay me for it. <laughs> if I tell the truth, you're not going to leave any money. <laughs> Everybody loves lies. Have you noticed that? As a matter of fact, I heard a man say this week that we are not a Christian nation. We are a nation of people. And that was a lie, but people applauded. Yes, we're not a Christian nation. They felt good about the lie. I'm like, that's a lie. But the people applauded. And people love lies. But anyway, um, where was I? Oh, yeah, what is sin? What is sin? Um... I agree with my wife, anything. Uh, you agree with your wife? I do. <laughs> First mistake. <laughs> well, is that the wrong answer? You agree to the second mistake. <laughs> so sin is uh, anything going against the laws of God. And, and what are the laws Proverbs, of God? The, everything that's in Proverbs. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. How is that helping you to know that? To agree with your wife and, and know that? 
What it has it done for you? Uh, make me feel right. Make you feel right. So you feel good about it. <laughs> okay. I understand. And that makes you feel good too, right? Well, it's just what I believe also, because it's a lot of sin and everything. It's a lot of sin and a lot of things that you can do. So that's why I agree with her what she said, because that's what I was thinking about too. So. Oh, you were? Yeah. And where did you get that idea from? Um, because I've sinned a lot before. You've sinned a lot before? Yeah. Do you still sin? Um, not like that, bro. I mean, I mean like, not, not like that, but I'm way better than how I was, so that's how I put it. You're still a sinner, you're just not a bigger sinner. You're just not a big sinner now. Boy, if you put it like that. No, I'm asking you. I'm just, yeah. I don't want to put words in You're a little sinner now. <laughs> not, not like that, but everybody's not perfect, so. Why, if you're, are you a Christian? Oh, you're with the crowd today, so. I forgot. Um, so you're a little sinner today. I mean, I still got some habits. I should say that. So I'm sorry. I still got little habits. So little habits. Yeah. Oh, okay. Are they sin habits? Um, sort of, kind of. But I don't know. See, now I'm getting confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll let you talk. No, no, no. I'm, we're together on this. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just here to try to point the right way for you. Okay. Uh, and we, you asked me what that's wrong. We just want a fellowship to get the truth. And that's why I want you to relax. Just speak from your heart. And then you will see if you're wrong or right. It's not a test. Don't worry about what someone else is going to think about it. Because you got to live this life. And, and you need to know that you know that you know that you know. So don't worry about what someone else is thinking. All right, that's the only way. I could care less what people think. That's my, I don't even think about to think about what people think. And I used to. But that doesn't occur to me now. I forget to think about what people are going to think about what I think or say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But so don't worry about it. If you want to be free, you got to be an individual. And you can't be an individual worried about what people are going to think about you. How, well, if I say this, then what the rest of the people are going to think about what I say? You know? So it's okay. If you're a little sinner, gone from being a big sinner, it's best to say it and get it over. Because if you are truly a, a, a child of God, you are becoming perfect. And, and, and I know people have told you you can't be perfect. That's another lie. And blind leaders are the blind. You can be perfect. Otherwise, God wouldn't have asked us to be perfect. He said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. You know? In the Bible? Yes. Not in the Proverbs. See, if you had gone past Proverbs, you <laughs> ran. <laughs> he said, it's not in Proverbs. And you would have ran across. Perfect. Yeah, he said, be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. He says, be holy as I am holy. And a sinner is not a holy person. You ever met a holy sinner? <laughs> no. Have you ever met a holy sinner? Thank you. And he tells us to do this. And if he's asking us to do it, we need to try to figure out how do we get there instead of believing the lie that we can't get there. And most people fall for the lie because it's the easy way out. So they think. But as long as you believe that lie, you're going to suffer in sin. You're going to suffer in hell. And you don't need to suffer like that on this earth. You can live a Christ-like life. But the people believe the lie. They love lies. Sinners, I mean, isn't it great to go to church as a sinner and the preacher saying, you know what, you don't have to worry. Just be a sinner. You can't be perfect. Don't bother about it. You're like, oh, yes, I can party now. I can't be perfect anyway. So why bother about it? Isn't that an easy way out? It seems easy, but it's not because you are suffering in your life. You don't have peace. You can't get along with others. You worry. You have fear. You have doubt. You have insecurity. Your life don't work with your finance. You can't have a good relationship with anyone because you can't be perfect. The preacher said it's okay. It's such a lie. And Satan made a promise that he's going to deceive. You never heard Christ say you can't be perfect. Nowhere does he say that. But the preacher said you can't be perfect. And the sinners accept the lie. I'm not perfect. And I can't be perfect. And then the imperfect people always reminding you that you're not perfect. When you correct them. Well, you're not perfect. You know, it's just such a lie. What's the purpose of Christ coming if he's not going to make us better? If we can't be better, why waste your time with it? 
If you're going to be a sinner after you're saved, why even bother being saved? And what are you saved from? Does that make sense? Just live a hell of a lie and die. My friend used to say, life is a, and then you die. And that's how he lived. It wasn't that, and then he died. Isn't that a sad way to live? You don't have to live that way. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to um, say something to this young man. I understand what he's talking about with um, being a coward in a conversation where he would um, correct somebody, but then, you know, say, I'm like that too, or something. Yeah, that is um, dumb. It is dumb, but I think, I think what it, for me, I think it has to do with um, backing off a little bit. Like you don't want to come on too strong because the person, you're concerned with the other person's feelings. Big mistake. Big mistake. Like I, I do that and it's a huge mistake in my yes. life because I, I'm like watering something down yes. because, you know, they're going to get mad. They're going to be upset with me. You yep. know, it's just horrible. Yeah. It's just so horrible. And I think that's all that is. It's it just, is that. It's all ego. Right. Ego is of the devil. It's all ego. You're supposed to tell the truth. And the Bible says that the truth is like a two-headed two -headed, headed sword. Headed. Two-edged sword. Sword. When it hit you, it's supposed to penetrate. It's supposed to hurt your ego. So it could kill the ego. And so when people are screaming about you telling them the truth, that's really good for them because that truth is trying to get in there to destroy that ego, the not them, that false thing that made a home in them. And so what people are doing, they're looking at these people screaming and yelling and going off. They say, oh, I shouldn't have said it that way. I need to soften it down because I don't want to hurt you. You know what I say there? Hell with that. Because if God, Christ loved me enough that he told the absolute truth and didn't care what I thought about it. He allowed me to see myself, and it was a mess. He didn't say, oh, you know what? I'm going to let you see, but I'm going to soften it up for you. I was shocked when he allowed me to see myself. But it shocked me into a different reality. But had he softened it down or would have been afraid to hurt my pride, I'll be in that condition today. You cannot be afraid with the truth. If you are afraid with the truth, it's because you don't have it. Because it casts out fear. You can't have fear and have truth. They don't get along with each other. They don't communicate well together. That makes sense? No? It why does is, to me. Why does a person have that tendency <clears throat> to be concerned with others? Why, because, why is that? Because they are an uh, ego-driven person themselves. They want to be liked. Want to be liked all the yeah, time? Yeah, they are, they are weak in nature. Mm -hmm. They don't have love. Uh, they're a selfish person. Mm -hmm. Anybody who is afraid to tell another person the truth is a selfish person. They're of their father the devil. They don't have love. <clears throat> they're a prideful person. They want something from you. They want you to make them feel good. They want something from you, and they're afraid that if they tell you the truth, they're going to lose it. I know guys who, um, you know, they grow up in the organization, and we tell them how to deal with women, you know, how to treat them. Don't put them on a pedestal. Love what's right because you represent God on earth. And then, lo and behold, the first girl they meet is like all that go out the window. They end up weakly follow her around, carrying on. I'm like, didn't we tell you the truth about this? <laughs> Don't do this. But it's like, it's, it went right out the window. And I, and I just realized it didn't catch on in their heart. They don't realize their role in life. They don't know they're supposed to be the leader. This is supposed to be that, as Christ was the example, they don't realize they should be that perfect example as well. They're like a little chicken chasing the hen, mama hen. It's, it's pitiful. But they haven't been born again yet. They are afraid. They need that comfort. They need that false love, and they don't want to lose it. They haven't gotten over that other spirit that made a home in them. And I understand it. But so they want something from you. When people are afraid to tell the truth because they want something from you, and I would never, ever, but never, ever, ever trust a person that won't tell me the truth. Because if they lie to you about you, they're going to lie to somebody else about you. They, they're going to disrespect you. They don't care about you when they can lie to you. 
And that's the truth because they're of their father, the devil. A person that won't tell you the truth because you're going to overreact is a liar. And they should never be trusted. They never trust them, I'm telling you, because they will take advantage of you. I've seen it over and over and over again. Liars. And lying is of the devil. I don't care if it's your daddy, your mama, your wife, your husband, your kids, your yo. If they lie to you about you, then they're going to they gonna screw you later, for lack of better words. Because a liar is a liar. That's how they do it. They of their father the devil. That makes sense? Yes. yes. And if you doubt me, look at your own private life. You don't have to confess it today. But look at your lives and see the people that been dishonest with you about you and see what they've done to you behind your back. See the damage that they've caused in your life. And see how they take that lie from person to person to person to person and nobody's happy. It's the truth. This is a spiritual battle. It's a battle between good and evil. And Christ has come and he's fought that battle for us and he wants us to accept good because you're already evil, right? He wants you to accept good so you can live this other life right now. You don't have to wait until you die. There's another life and a better life that you could have right here on earth. But if you're a liar connected to lie because you haven't been born again, whatever. Yes, ma'am. Did that help? Yes, it's just, it, it, it is such a, um, it's debilitating to um, not be able to be free. It is yes, it's like it's just a cloud over your head. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I don't have liars in my family, really, because my husband is not a liar. He'll tell you the truth. Is he the only one in your family? Um, well, my son, he's not a liar, and my daughter, yeah. they're not liars. They tell you the truth, huh? They tell you the truth. Right on. Um, and then my family, you know, they're, they're not liars. But Are you a liar? But I think I'm the liar. Yeah. Because. You I, are if you have fear. I have fear of yeah. telling the truth to, not to my my immediate family. I oh, talk, yeah. You would tell your husband the truth. No, I tell but my nobody son, else. I could tell them. Yeah. But, I mean, the other people, too. But the other people, um, they're so reactive to everything. It has to be this narrow little path. If yeah. you deviate one inch, then, you know, you're the devil. So it's so hard to. I don't have the courage. Like, yeah. like I don't have courage. And I, yeah, because, and I'll tell you why in a minute. In a few minutes, I just want to pull out some more out of other people. But you're right. You're of your father, the devil. Yeah. You, you love the world more than you love what's right. You want to be liked by these people. Yeah, and, and it's You want them killing. to see you I as... I feel like I'm dying. <clears throat> you are dying. Yeah. Every liar is dying. I, I feel kind of like I'm waiting for cancer, you know? You're waiting for what? Cancer. Oh, yes, you know? ma'am. Because I, I can't... It's a hopeless condition to live in. Yeah, it, it's like I'm concerned with what they think. Yes, ma'am. And yes, it's ma just... Oh, well. <laughs> Most people can relate to you because they're of the lie, and they're waited to die. And it's unfortunate that you're waited to die because Christ conquered death. And if you were not of the lie, in reality, you really don't have to die. Now, you know, we were waiting kind of late to find this out. So if I die tomorrow, you go, oh, I thought you said you didn't have to die. <laughs> but I've done so many damage to myself, so eventually it will happen, I, I guess. But if you were not of the lie, you would live as though, and, and feel that way too, 24 hours a day, as though there is nothing but life. But because you're of your father, the devil, you're walking in darkness and you're walking in death. And everything you do bring, bring you closer to that. It, I, I, go, I, I go forward and I, and I feel so good and free. Yes, ma'am. And then I go back. Yes, ma'am. And, and I just can't get to like, it's like waffling around and it's not straight forward. I'm yes, like ma'am. on this process, which I don't want to be in a process. I have so much life in me that it's amazing and I didn't know you could have this. Nobody told me this. But if he caused, he caused me to love what's right. He made me do it because my, my heart yearned for that. I wanted what's right. I wanted to break away from loving the world more than I love what's right. Yeah. You know, I heard that, you know what, if you love God, you become a free person. 
You know, if you love God, you're not subject to the world around you. People told me that all my life, but I didn't see the example. And then when I became aware enough to find out how you get it by admitting that I'm wrong so he can take over my life, I did it and my life changed just like that. And now I just, I was reading a book last night, all yesterday, off and on. I could barely put the book down. It just had so much inspiring information. And I'm kind of anxious to share it today, but I'm not. But I just, in all kind of ways, I mean, sometimes my son and I talk, and it just, it's about, it's, just, it's a life talking conversation. It really is. And I didn't have that when I had darkness in my heart. You can't accept a life conversation when you have darkness in your heart. You can't even disagree and agree with a person. You can't have a good conversation with a person that disagree with you if you don't have life in your heart. Because you don't want to hear that disagreement. You know, I'm right about this and you got to admit it. Otherwise, it turns into an argument. But when you have life in you, a disagreement is, uh, is um, educating you as well from within. It's amazing how that is, but you must be born again. You can't have that fear and get that. And Christ made it possible so that we don't have to live that way. You can be free just like that. You really can. Everything else is a lie. It's a total lie. You don't have to, as a matter of fact, he said that why put this off for tomorrow? Because tomorrow is not promised to you. He's telling you not to wait another day. So while you're peeling this onion, and, and going through this process, you can die and you're going to end up where you don't want to be for the rest of your life. You don't have time for tomorrow. Now is the hour. Now is the moment to accept it. I wouldn't take the risk of waiting. But your ego tell you, oh, you can wait. Peel the onion a little longer. It's a process. And you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring for you. And the way you drop your body is where you're going to end up. It's just reality. So I'll tell you, hopefully I can tell you in a minute how to get past that. But just seeing it really is the beginning of overcoming it. To be that honest about it is really the beginning of overcoming it. Because a lot of people would not admit what you just said. They are embarrassed by it. Their pride won't let them. They have a big ego. They're not going to admit it. Especially in a room like this. You know, oh, what are they going to think about you? You know, you're a coward. You know, I say to with them, don't make me cuss. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, I had the same issue. And then my thing is I, I know that um, that it doesn't have to be a process. No. The Bible says that, you know, in a twinkling of an eye, it can happen. Of an so eye. how do you drop that ego? How do you acknowledge the ego and drop it? and receive. I, I heard you say, admit that you're wrong. Admit that you're wrong about what? Okay, everything. So, I mean... There's I one major thing you need to admit that you're wrong about, and that is you've been playing God, and you're not God. Because when, you, when the pain comes that you're wrong, you need to accept that pain. Because every trauma is a pain, and then at the end of overcoming that trauma is another pain. But if you can see that, you know what, I've been trying to, by denying and being angry and doing whatever I do to accept, uh, escape truth, I've been playing God with my own life. If you could take that pain that says that you are not God, then you could be saved just like that. But most people, it's like, you know when you're by yourself in a room, like you feel good with a crowd, and then when you're by yourself, all of a sudden you feel like nothing, like you're unimportant, you feel empty on the inside. Nobody loved me, and I don't love nobody. You, you ever had that feeling? Like just a void inside of you? Anybody ever had that? Yeah. I used to have it. If you could take that pain and don't deny it by being angry about it or calling up somebody or eating some food, but if you can do that pain, you shall be saved. Because that's the false God in you that causes you to try to save yourself from that. Most people run away from pain rather than running toward it. You got to go to the pain and take it. And then God shall save you. When he allowed me to see myself, it wasn't a refreshing feeling. <laughs> but I saw it and I realized there was nothing I could do about it and he changed it just like that. I was a liar, no good, on the way to hell kind of person. 
But he changed it because I took the pain. I didn't play God. And the sin is man playing God. Men, men and women playing God. They are convinced that they can save themselves, even though they want to admit that they can. Because if you know that you can't save yourself, you will not fight against the issues that come to you in life. You will live and let live. You will accept it and overcome it. But when you get mad about it, you're playing God. When you get mad because someone tells you the truth, and then you look for a therapist to tell you that that person is mean, you're playing God, and you should never know God. Or you go to a church and a preacher tell you you can't be perfect, you should never know God. When you get mad about being wrong, you're playing God, and there's only one God, and you're not God. That's the problem. That's what the sin is. The sin is man playing God. Now, and as a result of playing God, all of these things are added unto you. Drugs, alcohol, addiction to this and addiction, you know, addiction to that, cheating on your husband, cheating on your wife. All those things are added unto you because you are your own God. Well, at least Satan is your God, but it feels like you're the God. And if that's what the primary sin is. The primary sin is not alcohol, it's not drugs, it's not this, it's not that. It's your pride. Prideful people think that they are God. Is that true or not? It is. And what he would do is take that, or he said that in order to live, you must die. And that means that you got to die from your prideful nature. That has to die so that you can live. And most people don't do that. All in the name of Jesus. They read the Bible until the cows come home, but they're still egotistical people. They go to a church so they have people to validate them that they're okay that way. You can't be perfect. But you got to die from your pride in order to live. It's not going to happen any other way. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I need it broken down more. Okay. Um, do I hear you saying that if I'm in a room by myself, because I'm, I'm by myself, I'm not with people, okay? So I'm in a room by myself, and if I feel something coming up, don't eat, uh, and, and I'm, I know that sometimes I eat when I shouldn't. Okay? Yeah, you, and we, so that's, that's playing God? Yes, ma'am. Or I flip on the television because it's so quiet, I, I need the sound. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's you don't right. want to see that you're wrong, so you wrong find something. What? that you've been playing God with your life, that you don't have perfect peace within, that there's something missing. You don't want to see, you don't want to feel the pain of being disconnected from the true God. But you don't realize that that's what it is. You know, you don't know, well, I'm playing God here by running to the refrigerator when I feel this void or getting drunk because I feel this way or that way. You're not thinking in your mind that you're playing God, but your ego, which is on the devil, is very aware that you are playing God. It deceives you so you don't admit it and see it. But if you can take that pain without running to the refrigerator or making that phone call, you start to see it and then you can overcome it. That makes sense? Yes. That's a very good question. I appreciate that. Who, who understand that? I'm telling you, when you have perfect peace, you're not going to ever, when you're born again, you're never going to experience that anymore. Because now you're filled with life. And, and life is ever, everlasting. It doesn't vanish. It doesn't go away. It never leaves you empty anymore. You're fulfilled with life, with the light of God within you. But if you are feeling those things, you're mad, you know, just carrying on, it's because you're playing God. And you may read the Bible, you may go to church, you may talk about Jesus and confess him, but your heart is far away from him. You don't know him at all. But most people will not let themselves feel that. And that's why they cannot be born again. I remember what I used to date a lot. In order for me to break up with one woman, I would have to hurry up and get another one so that I didn't feel lonely or empty or without. She was my guy, so I just replaced it with something else in order to survive it, thinking that I'm surviving, really. I was dying and didn't know it. But you got to feel that pain. Your ego needs to suffer and die. Ego is the pride of the devil. Anyway, God, we're almost done. And I didn't tell you about Jesus yet, did I? No. <laughs>
Let me take one more question. Yes, sir. I just I was just going to ask, say, uh, say uh, something else. Uh, what sin, uh, sin was? Uh, I was going to say that sin was our attitude and our reaction to everything and everybody around us. But I think you may have uh, answered. I did. Sin is your pride, and pride is the nature of the devil, and it dictates your attitude. Because the fruits of pride is fear and doubt and worry and insecurity, emotions, up and down, feel good emotions. You're constantly looking for love. You're constantly looking for approval from somebody else or something else. And that's what it's the pride that you're constantly feeding because it doesn't want to die. You don't want to take the pain of it. And that's what that is. When you have pride, you have all that stuff. Yes. And that's why, that's why we can be made perfect because when you die, I mean, when you die from your pride, you start to naturally overcome those things. You're constantly, you're just kind of seeing it and overcoming it. See it and overcome it. Then you're being made perfect as your Father in Heaven is perfect. That, did, did that help a little bit? Yeah, it did. Yeah. I love this, man. I love this life. I'm like a little kid, really, because I have perfect peace. And you had your hand real fast. And I, oh, well, sorry, I didn't I get you. I just wanted to you know, talk about that. When you said that he, um, the double-edged sword of truth. Yes. Yeah, um, double-edged sword of truth is the, um, when you actually speak the truth, um, it not only cuts them, it cuts you. And um, um, that's how you can tell you spoke the truth because that, it, it, it helps you as well as them. Well, it helps you, but you don't feel the pain of it if you're on the side of truth. Now, if you tell somebody the truth and you're on the side of evil, then you're going to feel it too. But when you're on the side of good and you're speaking the truth, you're speaking it out of perfect love and hope that that person will wake up. It's not an intent to hurt. It's an intent to awaken. So you don't really feel it. But as you're putting out love, you notice that it enhances your life as well. And there is no more pain. And the truth keeps you from becoming egotistical. The tr yeah, the truth keeps you away from the lie. It keeps you out of denial. That's another thing I love about the truth. Once you're born into it, you can no longer lie about yourself. You really see yourself as you are, but it's not a big deal anymore. You cannot lie to yourself about yourself once you're born again. Yes. Simeon was an old man in the temple when, the, when Joseph and Mary brought Jesus into the temple. And, and um, he told Mary that, um, that this sword is going to cut her soul, which this, the sword from this baby, which means your son is going to tell you the truth about yourself. Yeah. And, and now they were, they were kind of dense themselves. Yes, sir. When he was in the temple preaching. Man, as well, that's a powerful point. They did not understand when he said that I have to be about my father's work. Yeah. They didn't understand. Shepherds came and told them about the angels. You know, I mean, they had all kind of, but yet they still were somewhat dense. And if you notice in society today, it is against the law to tell mama the truth. Same things happening now that happened then. You can, if you tell mama the truth, you're going to jail. Have you noticed that? Mama don't want to hear the truth from you, from her kids, from the government. It's all daddy and not mama. I'm glad Jesus didn't follow that law. You're right. He was, he, the woman that he came from, he told her the truth as well because he loved her. But nowadays you can't do that. Don't tell mama the truth. Mama is it. I brought you here. I'll take you out. And it's too bad because mama's soul is being lost as a result of not being able to tell her the truth. And it's unfortunate. Um, of parents, I see parents teaching their children not to be honest with your mother. Oh, no matter what mama do to you, just take it. Mama love you. Mama throw you from the train, it's our love. Mama smack you upside the head, mama love you. It is all evil. It's, it is unfortunate. But the same thing is happening now. It's such a powerful point. I was looking at a program yesterday, and I don't even have time to get into it. But what they were talking about teaching kids, and the hosts were going along with it, was absolutely evil. 
the host of the show sitting up there, 250 pounds. Oh yeah, we should teach our kids this. Uh, this is a good idea. And her, the host friend was trying to say, oh no, I don't agree with that one. Well, here's why you should do it, total evil. Our battle is a battle between good and evil, folks. We are not in control of our lives. We are not in control. Anybody who thinks that they are in control of, the liar, of their life is a liar. You're being influenced by good or evil, and most people are being influenced by evil. That's just reality. Pat, you had your hand a while back. Um, I think it's, it's been worked out. Uh, you, got, you found the answer? I did. I mean, I, I've, I've been having a lot of situations that are showing me uh, this young lady in front of me here was mentioning some things about not speaking up and things that are not telling the absolute truth. Yeah. And I could see that happening in situations. And um, but I was kind of I could see that I was kind of fighting it, too, and trying to be strong when I wasn't. In other words, something happened so quick. It just shows you what it is. Yes. So. You know, there's no human way to be strong or whatever. You, you, can, you can fake whatever you want, but you can still see who you are. Matter of fact, when you're of truth, you don't have to fight to be strong. You're, just think about it. You're of the truth. You're of the man who is of the truth. You just, just like you live this lie naturally, you live the truth naturally. There is no effort in being honest. Well, but I'm it still, just is. But I'm still having that part of me that is not the man of truth, yeah. that goes into situations and is weak. So it's like, I was kind of fighting that, but I, I realized this stuff happens, and I have to be willing to just see what it is without the fight, you know, because and it's not, I, I can't fight. Good point. You know? That's the beauty of life. You must be willing to let life happen so you can overcome it, learn from it, and get better from it. But if you're fighting against it, you're not gonna learn anything or get anywhere. And you'll find yourself becoming so weakened that you don't want to fight against anything. I don't want any pressure. Don't pressure me. Because your spirit is weakening and it doesn't have the strength to fight against what's coming at you. You have to welcome that with open arms. It's not personal. It's there to show you your relationship with God. If you didn't have that, you know, how would you know your relationship with him? I can't take, if, can you say it in three words or less? Yeah, um, do not be angry with yourself for anything that you do or say because that keeps you from seeing when you're alone in the moment in your bedroom, all by yourself, especially at night when you're about to go to bed and that you feel uneasy. And if you're all caught up in what you have done during the day and you're thinking about that, you won't see that well, let me add to that still. something I, I disagree a little bit. When you say do not be angry about it, now people are going to force themselves not to be angry. If you are angry, let yourself see that you are angry. Okay. You know, just see yourself as you are. See what we're supposed to become. We're supposed to become a, uh, an observer of life. We're supposed to walk by that voiceless voice, not the voice in your head. So if you are angry, just see that you are, but don't fight against it. Just notice it. Because, because I, I don't want them to control themselves trying not to be angry. You know, I've been, I, was, I was concerned that not being angry would make me get more into it. You know, like, like, like the atheist. Don't be concerned, relax. No, I know, I know, I know that. And, and I asked God, in the name of Christ, I said, you know, what, it, what how can I overcome? And then because I wasn't being angry at all the things and stuff that I was saying and all the failures I was doing during the day, I, it, he gave me a little, a, a little insight that was like, when you're by yourself and you, and you feel anxious, that's when you need to be still. That's when you need to be still. Yes, that's and, right. And that's what I was you know, distracted from. When you're angry, instead of going off on people that you're angry at, it's best to be quiet and endure it to take the pain of it because it's all ego. It's the nature of the devil. So it's best to be quiet and let it pass so you can be born again, you can overcome it. The moment you lash out at a person out of anger, then you are feeding the devil. You're getting worse. You're, you know, you're just develop, developing a relationship with him. Yes, sir. Born again can, can happen continuously? 
No. Uh, something that happened once. Right. You know, yeah, it, it just once. once. Once it happened once, that's it. Because it's like when you're born from your mother, you can't go back and then come back you again. Like if you get upset, you see yourself is upset, and you just look at it so that you can be born again. Right. So it can happen today, and then it can happen tomorrow. Is that what you're saying? He wasn't born again. No. Oh. He, right. He doesn't have it yet. He's on his, he's okay. peeling back the onions. Uh, I'm not grasping it. <laughs> Uh, you're not beginning where I'm by myself and I'm anxious, but like the like the lady over here said, Larice, um, I will go ahead and turn on the TV, and and that's right. a mistake. Yeah. What? But uh, when you're talking a second ago, you said if when you're in a situation you get angry, you just step back, you be quiet, you look at it so that you can be born again. Right. You can die from it. So once you're born again at that situation. Something else pops up tomorrow and you get angry again. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, you, you know, you may overcome that moment of anger right there, but that doesn't mean you have been born again yet. Because when you are born again, you no longer have <coughs> anger in your heart, period. Okay. When you are truly born again, it's no longer a part of your nature so at all. Just a little born again? Yeah, and just and a, he's on the way. Again, you don't get upset. That's right. Anymore. Good way to put it. Yes, sir. You're right. He just discovered these things about himself. He's seeing it because now he wants to overcome it. But when you are born again, that nature, which is of the devil, that's what anger is, is no longer a part of your life. And you can't make yourself born again, right? No. You cannot do it. You can't do it by reading the Bible. You can't do it by holding up holy hands. You can't do it by singing Christian songs. So is it a process? No. <laughs> no. It's, right. a, it's the moment you're willing, you know that you're wrong. You know you're playing God. It can happen then. You can't make that happen. You just want to make it a process because we don't accept it. Is that the deal? Yeah, that's right. All right. You don't accept it and you've been told it's a process. Very, yes, sir. That's what makes this a process. Okay. All right. In short, because I only have two minutes. To, do I have? OK, three minutes. I can't get into the whole Jesus thing now. I think that we have. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you have the the. Um, the primary purpose of Jesus coming is to give us a way out of, um, out of uh, hatred, ego, and pride into love. That's the primary reason that he came, so that we can be born into love and love one another, because God is love. And as long as you, when, as a fallen person, you are only of hate. You're only of resentment. That's all you're about. And that's why Christ had to come, because hateful people kill each other. Have you noticed that? Dishonest, suck life out of each other, use each other, just all kind of stuff. And so salvation is overcoming that nature of hatred and being born into love. And that was Christ's uh, ultimate purpose, is so that we can be born into love. God is trying to create love. And if we're not born into it, he's not able to do it, right? So we are born into love. That's the, because he said that, it, you know, you can speak in tongues, you can jump up and down, you can have a great house, you can have the world loving you, but if you don't have love, you don't have anything. And that was his purpose, so that we can be born into love. We should love one another. And love is not a feeling, it's not what you think, it's not what you have or don't have. Love is... Um, um, not playing God, not resenting yourself or your fellow man, but being honest with them because you understand and you can see. Tell the truth. And that's what love is, just not hating. When you don't have hate, then you don't, and then you have love. But if you're overreacting, if you're getting upset because somebody else is wrong, or you're offended by what other people think or say, you're overreacting to your environment, you're, you know, you're doing drugs and alcohol and looking at movies and carrying on. You don't have love. You just don't have it. Because when you're born again of God, you have love. And that's his primary purpose is to bring us into the presence of love. All right. And because of time is out, that's all I can tell you about it. But if you're reacting, you don't have love. So think about that this day while you're eating your ribs and eggs and sweet potatoes and candy yams and collard greens and cornbread and, and, and what, Kool-Aid, lemonade, hot sauce. Hot sauce. 
But that's what Jesus, and Jesus was like a big brother to us. He was our big brother. And when you are born again, you become joint heirs with him. Everything that the father owned, that he owned, Jesus owned, and the father owned, we own it too. Our whole life starts to change. We become a brother with Christ. He's our brother. He was our example. And God is God, and Jesus is the Son of God. And when we believe the truth about the Son, then we can believe the Father. And that's what his purpose. He gave us something to believe into. And what we believe into, it be, we become one with that. Just like when you believe a lie, don't you become one with a lie? When you believe the truth, you become one with the truth. And that's his purpose, for us to become one with, with God. All right? Let us hear from you. Our website is uh, bondinfo.org. You can call 1-800-411-BOND. You can also email us, church at bondinfo.org. And just think about that. If you have perfect love, you will not, will not, will not overreact to anybody or anything around you because you are protected from that. You don't have fear about telling the truth. You don't even think of it. All right. So let us hear from you. Uh, we also need to tithe and offering. We need your support. And if this program is helping you at all, help us to help others. All right. Um, happy Easter to you. Really think about Christ. Seek first the kingdom of God and his right way and all shall be added unto you. And that's what you have to do. Put him first. First things first. If you seek after him, everything else is going to work out. Thank you for being a part of it. And thank you guys, too. I appreciate it. <laughs>